Okay. Um, I. It's not exactly the uh, uh, crypt analysis. Um, this is, I suppose, uh, crypt analysis, but of a specific type. This is. Uh, not generalized script analysis, but rather attacking uh, passwords. Now, passwords, as I say, we protect by uh, not encrypting necessarily, well, sort of encrypting, but it's one-way encryption. We cannot recover the password from the hash value that we take of, uh, the, um, of the password. Uh, but... Um, we we can do a couple of things. Now, I I believe that I've talked about the dictionary attack, but I don't know that I've gone into detail. The dictionary attack is simply a heuristic um, that saves us a bit of time on a brute force attack. Instead of just taking, you know, completely random or, or testing every possible, uh, you know, 15-character combination, we... Uh, look up, uh, well, not even look up, we, we use the dictionary, we hash all the words in the dictionary, and if somebody is dumb enough to use a, an actual word as a password, then we got them, uh, because someone, you know, will, and, and again, this, um, this attack, uh, both of these attacks, um, uh, depend on having a copy of uh, the password table. With, with the uh, hashed password values. So, uh, you know, we can look that up, and, and when we find a match, um, when we, you know, find a hashed value that we produced from a word in the dictionary, then we also know that that is, you know, where the hash value matches something in the table, we know we've got the password. Now, the, the other attack, uh, a little bit more interesting um, and <clears throat> an interesting uh, trade-off. Again, it's, it's a way, a, a heuristic of improving on brute force. And it's kind of a trade-off between uh, processing time and um, uh, storage. Because what we'll, what we'll do is we will take the, um, we will take the password, well, uh, the, the length of the hash value of the password, um, and we will hash that or encrypt whatever it is that we're doing to produce that value repeatedly. You know, as soon as we get a result, we encrypt that result. Uh, as soon as we get that result, we, we encrypt and, and get the next result. So that we build a table of all the possible combinations of the uh, hash value of the password. Now, at this point, what we've got, you know, this is fairly enormous, but we, we've got a table of all the possible uh, passwords. But in order to uh, use that, we have to search all the way through and find, you know, so it's enormous. Um, and we don't know that we can actually get somebody's password as such. What we can get is, is something that has a fat hash value equivalent to a password. Um, and will therefore work as a password, but we we can't actually recover the original uh, password, at least not reliably. We don't know uh, whether we've got it. We just know we've got something that will work. So, <clears throat> having done that, um, we've got uh, this enormous table. So. We want to reduce the size and storage. So we throw away 90% of it. You know, keeping one record out of every 10. Or 
we we throw away 99% of it. We throw away uh, 99 records out of every 100 records. Um, we have reduced the size of the table, and of course we've thrown away an awful lot of material, but it still has value because when we go to use the rainbow table, which we have now reduced to a hopefully manageable size, we uh, will take uh, the value uh, that we get in the um, in uh, that we've we've matched. Um, uh, or, or that we've taken from the password table, and we encrypt that ten or a hundred times, whichever you know, uh, whatever we factor we have reduced the rainbow table by. And having gotten ten or a hundred uh, candidates, we then search through the rainbow table, which we can now do. A lot quicker because it's smaller. When we find a match, we still got a little bit of work to do because we we know uh, what uh, what range this is in, but we still don't know the exact uh, password or at least password that will work. And so um, we have to again. Uh, you know, start encrypting those things and seeing, okay, you know, what pattern produces from the hash value, produces a hash value, which is the one that we want. And there we've got it. So, um, again, this is, this is not cryptanalysis as such, but, well, it is, because uh, basically... Uh, cryptanalysis, as I said, is just breaking the system. And this allows us to break the system. Um, rainbow tables are now uh, sort of commercially available. Um, people have produced their own rainbow tables. So if you have a situation where uh, your company uh, encrypted uh, all of the ledger files and uh, only the uh, CFO knew the password and he went under a bus you know you, you go in and uh, use the rainbow table to recover uh, what the password was and then hopefully change it and find a bit more secure uh, way of ensuring that you retain the password so, uh, you know, it's, uh, anyways, it's an interesting, um, way of, of looking at this. And again, I, you know, um, this, this balance between, uh, storage and processing, um, that you use in trying to find the best match in, in terms of, uh, being able to recover these passwords.